going to respond to Amy's second two latest video called It's a Boxing Kind of Day. Um, I skipped a couple of them because for one, I don't think they're very relevant anymore. And for two, she just posts every day, so I'm trying to weed out which ones I respond to. But this one sounds interesting, like maybe there's some controversy that I want to know about. So in that respect, I'm going to react to that video. Uh, let's see what she has to say. Good morning. Welcome to Wednesday. Um, yes, it is a nasty Wednesday here where I live. It's rainy and it's cold. It's 44, but it feels like it's just you know, freezing. So anyways, um, today is Wednesday weigh-in, which I will insert that clip here in just a little bit. Um, but I am excited to say that today is the second day of hardcore working out. I am so sore, but I know it's worth it. And I know at the end of the day, I will be happy that I did it. But let me tell you, my shoulders hurt, my arms hurt. Woo, I'm finding muscles I never knew I had in those areas. Um, my primary workout is boxing which That's cool. has actually been pretty fun, to say the least. I mean, it does work you. I mean, I didn't realize boxing is that strong of an exercise. So, for sure. Oh, yeah. I when I was a teenager, I actually, um, I think it was the teen center that was actually by my house. I took kickboxing, just for a little bit. Um, and, I mean, you the warm-ups that they have you do are insane. Like the, all the jumping jacks and everything that they had to have that they had me do, it would definitely took a lot out of me. Um, I was actually considering taking boxing uh, because for me, I think it would be fun to take a class of some sort. I was I did Zumba for a while and I enjoyed that, but I I would like to take some sort of class. I'm even considering some sort of self defense class, like you know, or uh, like karate or I don't know taekwondo or something that I feel like not only would help me work out, but also help me learn to defend myself because I always have it in the back of my mind that one day if I do get to the weight that I want to get to. Now mind you, I'm still tall and I do have resting bitch face, so who knows, but I still worry that like something could happen to me, like someone could try to take me or someone could try to, you know, harm me in some way. And I would like to be able to defend myself um, if I could. So I'm thinking that's something I might want to do. I'm filling it, and then I'm also um, doing some bar exercises where you hold a bar behind your neck and you twist it, so it's like twisting all of your muscles, you're tightening your core, it feels really good, but again, like I said, I'm sore now, I feel like I've done a bunch of setups, I'm doing push-ups on the wall, um, Yeah. and then I'm walking. That's what I have to do too, um, because when I fell and I hurt my right knee so bad, that if I try to do a lot of floor uh, exercises, um, the pain is intense. Um, but I tell you what, you can still get a good workout with floor push-ups. Believe me, I have. Like your arms still get a good workout. Um, so that's the one thing I like about the gym that I'm in uh, is that they will do modified workouts for you, which is great. Um, maybe as I lose weight, it won't hurt so much to get on my knee. But at this point, I tried it a few times in the class before I had to ask them for the modified workouts because. Like the pain afterward would last well into the night and into the next day. And you know, it doesn't bother me that much normally. And I just, I was like, no, I, I can't. And that was the only thing that would really hurt is that knee, so. Distance. So I'm excited to see how I progress. Um, I'm working out two times a day. So um, I did one workout today, I did two yesterday, and I'll do my other one this afternoon, evening. Uh, I'm actually on my way to Walmart um, because they declared um, at Maya school that he, um, well, all the kids are going to be doing online school um, from home and possibly for the remainder of the year. So because of that, I am going to go to Walmart and just get some stuff like, you know, pens and pencils and, you know, I mean, just the essentials that he needs for his learning. Um, because I want to make sure that we do everything we can to keep them on a very good routine. Yeah, I'm actually surprised she didn't already have that stuff. I mean, considering he was in school and she homeschools 
the other two, you would think she'd have all that stuff already. I mean, unless she just ran out, I don't know, but. Um, and, you know, put his education above anything. So, I'm going to be doing um, that with him, and then also I will be doing preschool with the two babies between time so that they're getting some work in as well. Um, I went on last night and I downloaded um, Kindle, I think it's called. So I can purchase uh, books for him so he can read books and, um, you know, I'm going to make it as fun as we can, you know, but I did sit down last night and I worked out a schedule. So, you know, because I, like I said, you know, well, this isn't vacation time. We're, we're working hard to make sure that you stay where you need to be on your level alone. Yeah, that's very important. They say even um, on regular school years, you know, the, the hardest part for a lot of kids is the summer because they can forget a lot of things. Um, and the summer's usually spent, you know, going on vacation or doing something like that. That's why they say most schools should do year round, which I think is, I think is a great idea just to do year round. It would make more sense because then there's not months at a time where they're not in school. With everybody else. So I, um... Plus on a second note with year round too, because the kids are in school throughout the year with certain times being off. Those kids who re who require school just for eating can still get that opportunity to eat because that's another issue with, you know, the way the school system is now is that for those three months, some kids don't get a lot of food, if any. Made the schedule, you know, I told them I said everybody's up at eight. We're washing our faces, hands, eating breakfast, and then we start school at nine, and we'll go until probably 11, 30, 12, stop have some breakfast, or breakfast, have some lunch, um, have, you know, some downtime for just a little bit, rest your brain, and then at uh, one o'clock, get back to school. Come on, buddy. Do you work okay. Um, anyways, and then one o'clock, he'll, uh, get back to work until he is done for the day, which is about up three. I mean, I also notice, um, she took down the um, decal she had up there because I don't see it. I mean, it was big enough you'd see it. Um, either that or this is a different car. I don't know. But it looks like she took down the decal. So I guess she was getting a lot of heat from that, especially with all, some of the hate that she's been getting. Uh, and it probably just wasn't a good idea to advertise who she was. So that was probably pretty smart. I'm going to try and do about five hours of school. I'm going to try and push it to that. Um, but we'll see how everything goes because, again, I'm not the one putting the upper curriculum together. It's the school doing it, so all the kids are going to be doing the same things. Uh, so I'll see with what they have there. And then also he will do uh, virtual, like, Skyping with his teachers so that she'll be checking in with him, having some one-on-one -on -one time. Uh, having one-on-one -on -one time with him. <clears throat> see, I mean, that's actually a good idea for them to do that, too, because these teachers still need to work. Um, so I think it's a great idea so that they can still teach and get paid as well. And then, uh, me and her will also meet at different times over Skype to check in with his progress and things like that. So yes, there's a lot of changes going to happen, but you know, if it's what's going to keep our family and everybody else safe and healthy, then I am all game for it because that's what comes first is everybody's health, you know, and that's what I was saying. I mean, we have not gone anywhere besides I went to the doctors the other day. We did not go out at all yesterday. Where are we on? Monday. So Monday I went to the doctors. Yesterday we didn't do anything. We stayed home. Um, and then today I'm running out to Walmart, but I mean, this is going to be an in and out trip. Like there's no BSing in the school store because I... I have no uh, reason to be just poking around at the store. So, anyways, but it is also giving us a chance too to catch up on things. Like we're organizing, um, cleaning areas of the house that needed to be done, and things. So it's it is nice, you know. But I mean, we're ready to get life back to the way it's supposed to be. Um, you know, as normal as we can. How normal is going to get back to? I don't know. You know, I think things are going to change. Obviously. All around the world from here on out. I think there's gonna be things that are changing, but 
hopefully for the better and not for anything worse or declining. Um, but, yeah, so. It, sorry, <laughs> I moved and scared the crap out of the cat. She was like, oh, are you sorry, baby? She was licking my hand. You forgive me. I think so. I didn't mean to scare you. No. Poor cat. Anyways, let me put my uh, way in here and then I'll check in with you guys. Today is April 1st, 2020. Hello. Hello. It's ready. Okay, so I am up. Um, I am up a pound. I'm up a pound. There ain't nothing to say about it. Um, but I'm hoping that this coming week on the scale is going to show much different because I am changing. Obviously, I mean, first of all, I'm ch but I'm introducing and working out twice a day. That's the first thing. And then also, um, I'm really working hard at trying to cut my portions and the times that I'm eating, like, instead of eating dinner at 8, 30, 9 o'clock, um, I've been trying to get dinner done by like 6, 37 at the latest, but um, trying just to not to go to bed on a full stomach is like one thing I am trying to cut. And then uh, also I, breakfast has been a little bit of a challenge because I'm not doing those meal replacements. Um, my doctor told me to cut those just because clearly it's either the medication I was taking, which he had me stop. And then also he um, had me cut the meal replacements because of the soy. So yeah um something else too because it was something i had noticed when i was doing keto um was that when i started working out my weight loss slowed and the reason for that is because you're gaining muscle and muscle is heavier than fat so it's going to make you gain so that's something too that she has to be wary of if she's actually gaining muscle is that that's going to be a contributing factor I am slowly starting to like heal. However, I still have times where I am just like itching so bad. Um, my core stomach is so tore up from the itching. It is horrible. Mm. But um, he has me on prednisone. Prednisone. He has me on prednisone. I take three pills for three days, two pills for three days, one pill for three days, and I guess that's supposed to help. Plus, at night before I go to bed, I take um, Benadryl. So. That the Benadryl's really, I don't think the Benadryl's really helping me, to be honest. Um, because I still am itching when I, after I've taken it. So I told Ollie, I said, I wonder if I should just like not take it at all and just see like what the difference is between taking it and not taking it. Um, so we'll see. And then my goal is, is to start cutting down some of my medications so that I can start weaning myself from so many medicines because I am just, I am tired of popping pills for everything, you know, and it's hard. It is so hard because, you know, I know some of them are, have been something I've had to take in order to, you know, um, to make it through the day, you know, when I had the postpartum depression and all of that. It was tough. It was really tough. And I yeah, um, and that's the thing too. Like, if it's medication that she's taking on her own, like pain meds or something like that, and she wants to try to wean from those, it's okay. But if it's like antidepressants or mood stabilizer or anything like that, that's definitely something she, I'm hoping she'll at least talk to a doctor about before she decides to just start weaning herself off of those, um, because obviously they're doing their job if she's feeling better anyway. Um, because when you'll get a lot of people, they'll be like, oh yeah, you know, I finally feel normal. I think I'm good to get off the medicine. But it's like, you know, the medicine's why you're feeling normal. Like you have to, you know, or like normal. Um, I know that's a bad word to use, but like you understand what I'm saying, right? Like you feel un unstressed, un uh, depressed uh, a little bit or whatever, you know, it's working. So 
so that's why you continue taking the medication even when your mood does become um, more stabilized and better. I am so thankful that there were medicines out there that could help to ease my anxiety and to ease that depression because it was awful, especially when you, you know, just have a baby and there's so much going on between the excitement of the baby and then you've got the fear of, you know, being a parent and just everything that goes along with it. And I think I hit, with Omar, I want to say I got worse. And I think it's because of how everything worked out with him when he was in the NICU. And, you know, we had to leave the NICU and leave him there because there was no space for us. And then I felt like we were being thrown out. And, you know, so I really, like, was like, for me, for a while, um, I, you know, was able to kind of overcome it. But I think I overcame it because then I got pregnant with Ezra. And... They say that the hormone of being pregnant can actually override the depression. So I think that's why I didn't feel like I got in such a deep depression with Omar as I did with Ezra. But I mean, like I'm saying, the, the medicine seriously has helped so much, but I really don't want to be a reliant on medications for the rest of my life. You know, I need to figure out what I need to do to learn to cope with some of these feelings and things like that. I'm not... Yeah, but I think in some sense, some situations you really shouldn't have to cope with it if there is a medication out there that can help you and I mean with postpartum depression I would think that after a while it would balance itself out because of you know a lot of it's caused by the hormones of having a baby and eventually your body would regulate itself um, but if your body's not doing that then you're probably better off staying on the medication I don't know though I don't you know I've never I've never had a baby um, so I don't know how that goes Hopefully I have the opportunity to have a child one day, um, and hopefully I don't get postpartum depression because it's not fun from what I understand, but, um, you know, I don't have that experience, so I don't know. Saying that it's bad to be on medicine, like absolutely not, if you need to be on it, be on it, but I mean, I'm on two antidepressants, I'm on a mood stabilizer, I am on anxiety medicine, blood pressure medicine, I was on the metformin, but he has taken me off the metformin. I was on a sleep aid, which we taught, we stopped taking that this last week. Um, so there's a lot of things that, you know, were changing, but... I feel like, too, with the blood pressure medicine, once she actually loses weight and gets down to a healthier weight, probably below 300, she will probably not need that anymore either. I mean, my, my blood pressure is elevated, but I know that if I lose 50 pounds, that's not going to be an issue anymore. It's, you know, your body's way of coping with all that extra weight. So that is definitely something she can do, um, which is why taking her health seriously and doing the exercises and stuff is so important. Um, and you know, for myself included. It's just slowly starting to win ourselves down is the goal. So anyways, all right, you guys, I am not going to keep chitter chattering. Um, again, like I was saying, I am really pushing and hoping as soon as this quarantine um, bypasses us and we can start going out and doing things, I really want to start doing like major, you know, daily vlogging again. It's just, that's what I enjoy and I love sharing my, my, my life and everything that's involved in it. You know, I think people appreciate that. I think that those are more interesting than always, you know, sitting down and talking. And I hear you guys, I hear my subscribers talking about, you know, it's just not as fun when you're just listening to someone chitter chatter. And I understand that. I get it. I'm the same way. I like watching people that are showing their life rather than just always talking to me. So, um, that's something that is a goal that I am hoping to, um, implement into my channel again is daily vlogging. So keep your eyes open for that. And, uh, Anywho, all right, you guys, well, I am almost at the store, so I'm going to go ahead and close off here. I hope, again, you guys are doing okay. Um, I really want to appreciate, I don't know, I want to appreciate, I really want to say thank you to everybody that has been reaching out to me, checking on me and the family. I so appreciate it, and I really, really, really am appreciating all of the apologies that I've been receiving. It's not that I'm expecting people to say sorry or anything in that manner, but, you know, it feels good that people are maybe starting to realize I'm not the person people have made me out to look like. Yeah, and I mean, if if people are starting to look at her differently than they were in the beginning, and especially those who were quite rude about it, you know, 
being able to apologize and say, you know what, maybe I had you wrong or maybe I just acted badly, I think is a really great um, thing if you can do it. Um, but uh, it's hard. It's hard to admit when you maybe made a mistake or when you're, you know, wrong in some way. So I get that. But I'm glad. I'm glad that um, she's getting a better reception, I guess. Um. I just, I'm, I'm hoping that I can regain trust within a lot of people because I really want my channel to be something successful and something where, you know, we can all just get together and, you know, talk and I can go live and we can have fun and all of that. So anyways, all right, you guys, I'm going to close because I'm going to go to the store, but take care and I will check in with you guys probably tomorrow. Bye. Okay. Yeah. So I misinterpreted the boxing kind of day thing. So I was like, oh. Maybe there's an issue, but uh, I, I'm just glad she's doing it. I think that's great. Ow, sorry, the cat's deciding to claw me. Not aggressively, she just was being sweet, but I didn't realize that her claws hurt. Yeah, it hurts when you do that. Maybe good enough? What do you think? <laughs> but, oh, I think it. Yeah, she's so sweet. She's doing muffins, but she always does muffins with her claws out, and it hurts like a bitch. You should touch. You don't know. I know I got a clipper class. Hey, thank you. Thank you for the lives. That's so sweet. Well, anyway, um, <laughs> kitty distraction. Yeah, that's really good. I'm proud of her. So she, there's there, ow, there's like one more video that she's got um, that I'm gonna react to in a bit. Uh, I think the next one I'm gonna react to right now is uh, one of Amberlynn's videos. Um, but, yeah, I hope you guys have a good day and enjoy this video, and uh, I'll see you soon. Oof.